the natural home of an Easterling archer. But wouldn't it be nice just once to put these guys to use in at least some way? Well, hold on tight, because I'm going to show you how to make this pretty sweet eastern looking watchtower a comfortable home for some largely useless models. Fab. Hello and welcome to another Battle Games in Middle-earth terrain tutorial. The instructions for this one mainly come from the Harad issues of the Battle Games in Middle-earth magazines, which give lots of designs and styles for making a Middle Eastern town. So let's crack on. I start with the outer walls made from 5mm foam board, bought in a large pack on eBay. They even use thin foam board as packaging for the foam board, in some cases. It's like foam board inception. I start by making a square building approximately 100mm by 100mm. Don't forget, with these buildings, make sure you account for the width of the card on each side to make sure it's a perfect square. So trim off 5mm so it's like 95 by 100 sometimes. In one of those four bits, I start to cut a door frame out. I decide to give it an epically large door, like basically like one on a mosque, to give the building a little bit of a touch of grandeur for the mighty archers it'll later house. I mainly use PVA glue to stick it all together, but the great thing about working with foam board is you can use these dress pins to hold everything together while it dries. And with that, you've got yourself a basic building structure. To give the tower a bit of architectural interest, I add a couple of steps, uh, basically before the, the layout on which the, the Easterlings will be standing. The easiest way to do this would be actually using two bits of foam board, one small, one bigger, glued on top of one another. But I wanted the steps to have a kind of depression in the tower for troops to stand in and kind of be almost like the, the barricade around them or the, the kind of defensive wall around them rather than building a separate wall on top. So I cut out frames which would sit on top of one one another instead. They ended up being a bit wonky and needing pins and a lot of drying time to make them work, but they turned out okay in the end. While those top bits were drying, I started work adding depth to the outer shell of the building. Rather than just having a hole as the door, the guide recommended an entryway with pillars, so I clad the whole base layer in more foam board and cut a larger, more ornate door this time. And I make sure there's room for pillars by the door, which are made from dowel, and I add that distinctive onion top shape to the door to give it a truly Middle Eastern look. Now, for those of a truly weak disposition, look away. And kids, learn a lesson from this next bit. I'm trimming away some rough edges on the building with an incredibly sharp craft knife. And look where my hand goes. I almost can't watch. A slice of the thumb and a thunderous applause from the TV gig I'm watching, and that'll teach you to think where you cut. Please take note of the plaster for the rest of the video. Now, rather than deleting this next mistake, I'll walk you through it. I cut up some thin balsa beams for what would be the canopy above where the archer boys stand. Then I made a little trapdoor by cutting out a little bit of the foam board base and stuffing some chopped up barbecue skewers in the gaps. Then, now you can see why this was a mistake. Those beams look absolutely ridiculous. They're too long and they're too thin. Christopher Wren, eat your heart out. Or almost certainly not. So I get my new hobby saw out and get some beefcake pillars cut out from a slab of balsa wood. Now these pillars take up way more room on the top of the tower, 
but they also actually look like they can support the top, which by the way is just a polystyrene ball from Hobbycraft cut in half. What these polystyrene balls and eggs of all sizes are actually for normally, I can't honestly imagine, but they work perfectly for domes on top of buildings. So grab yourself them, they're dirt cheap. Now, to make that ornate top really stand out, I decided to make some trim to overhang the edges there. This is just more foam board cut to the right length and about a centimetre or two wide, and then I hand draw a bit of a wavy motif to it and slice it before sticking it in place with PVA glue aided by more dress pins. From there, it's just a case of mixing a bit of filler with PVA and water and splashing it all over. Finally, I cut the bits of balsa wood I was going to use for the top into two centimetre long pieces and start arranging them equally distant around the top of the outer walls. This is just an extra detail there to simulate roof beams which go through the building in this sort of old sort of Middle Eastern building style. If I'm honest, I found them tricky to get right. If you don't cut them straight, they can look a bit wonky and PVA glue didn't really bond quickly enough for what I wanted and they ended up sliding a bit. Um, I needed something a bit qu quicker drying but there was nothing to hand so I just carried on and it worked okay. I probably should have done these kind of balsa wood um, beams earlier on in the process so the filler would have gone on afterwards and helped them and helped give them a bit more strength um, but th that way I'd have had these little things poking out while I was moving things around and sticking other things on it might have made it a bit trickier so you know um, I guess I guess it's six of one and half a dozen of the other. Then it's just a matter of painting. I sprayed it with Army Painter Leather Brown and then dry brushed it with a mixture of house paints, uh, sort of uh, bony colours and then white colours for highlighting it all in a white. In retrospect, I think I'd have preferred to have start on a bone coloured undercoat and built up more to a white layer, but I'm not too unhappy with the outcome. It just looks a little dark. The finishing touches were a red trim around the base of the polystyrene dome and the top of the building above those little beams and I painted that with golden zigzags. Finally, I added a faux cloth door by just soaking a bit of paper in PVA glue and sticking it onto the door. It gives it a bit of a floaty vibe for that door, perfect for a hot country. Though looking back, I wish I'd put a far more ornate looking door on it to really sell the idea that it's some sort of religious building co-opted for war. But nonetheless, there it is, a home of Easterling archers, and hopefully a bit of inspiration for you. Have you built anything similar? Anything I should have done differently? Let me know in the comments below. And also, are Easterling archers ever worth taking in a game? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching, and stick around on the channel for more terrain, painting, and some Easterling themed content on the way soon. You piece of shit.